Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second session uh, of today's B-Sides conference. And I'll pass you straight along to Boyan Alika Vazovic, who will talk to you now. There'll be time for questions afterwards. If you have questions, please raise your hand. If, if you don't have a question now, you can always reach Boyan during the course of the day. Okay, thank you, John, for your introduction. Uh, thank you very much. Hello to all. I'm not fluent with Hungarian. You know about Budapest. <laughs> and I've learned uh, during my visits to Budapest, I've learned the most important words on Hungarian, such as gulash, langos, kurtos kolac, shor. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, today I'm talking about batch and breaches in OT environments. I will share some of my experiences in the last few years. And of course, you can ask the questions during the presentation of, or after the presentation, I will be around. So let me introduce myself at the early beginning of the presentation. It doesn't work. Wonderful. Huh? I know proper Hungarian word for this situation, but... <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't seem... I think I'm not so lucky today. What? Give me a few seconds. Oh, finally. Okay, I, currently I hold the position of uh, principal cyber threat intelligence in, in Figo company in Croatia. Uh, and most of my daily tasks are related to intelligence analysis, sometimes to reversing various kind of stuff and incident response, most usually as a supporter, not as an incident leader. And you can find me and contact via LinkedIn. This is my profile. Feel free to ask any questions, to send co uh, connection, invite, etc. So I will, be, I will be happy to answer all of your questions. Okay, so let me introduce you to the, today's agenda. I will talk about ICS environments. I will uh, talk about you know, just from the, just, I will mention the, just the basics about uh, industrial control systems. And I will guide you through or lead you to my experiences from incident response in such environments. Uh, <laughs> and I will uh, also uh, go through the brief history of Windows operating systems. So today's lesson will be also a history lesson for younger generation in the audience. But don't go, please don't go. I, I hope it will be very, very useful for you. And for all older generation, generations in the audience will be something that they already know, I hope. So you can use also command line CMD in Windows to scope in incidents. This is especially useful if you are in a very closed, very strict environment where you cannot install anything you want during the incident. And this is pretty characteristic for OT environments. It's quite normal, okay? Okay, so let me introduce you into the industrial control systems. Just a few words and comparisons between IT and OT systems. If we're talking about IT systems, we are talking about data protection. You are protecting the databases, documents, file shares, uh, something, some stuff in the cloud, etc. But if you are talking about industrial control systems, you are protecting the process, every single process, production process, for example, for example, produ producing the electricity, is composed, is compilation of 
uh, many uh, micro processes which are and they are uh, interdependent inside of the very big one very big uh, process so this is the most important th this is the ultimate goal to keep the process 24 7 fully functional in IT environment for from the defenders perspective if you look at the network logs, network uh, user behavior, etc., you won't be able to uh, predict some patterns such as internet surfing, etc. But if you look at the uh, network connections and the protocols and the patterns inside of OT network, it's very easy to predict uh, uh, every single connection, every single uh, behavior, because everything is programmed exactly to some rules, you know, and it's very easy to monitor such systems. It's very easy to detect anomalies in such systems. Regarding the hardware upgrades, it's quite normal in enterprise systems, in IT systems, to upgrade hardware workstation servers every three, four, five years. It's quite normal, but it's abnormal or it's not usual to OT systems to upgrade every, every single year or every three years uh, the complete hardware. It's, it's, uh, it's unimaginable uh, because you have to plan all, all the process of replacing the hardware, software, everything because we are talking about processes 24 7 and high available and high reliable everyday processes right and you can the, the, the final conclusion will be that you can uh, see frequent change in IT it's quite normal on every on daily basis but in OT you won't see uh, frequent change on uh, hourly basis or daily basis, etc. Okay? And of course, all devices in IT nowadays are secure by design, at least most of them, right? But in OT, it's quite normal to see unsecure by design devices, protocol without authentications, uh, plain text protocols, uh, devices without any kind of login forms, you can directly open via browser uh, controls, uh, control panel via Ethernet network and you can change anything you want. It's quite normal in OT systems. Okay. And uh, the first rule that I've learned during my experience, watch, don't touch. You can watch anything you want, but don't touch. Don't touch it. And if you've been to the museum, it's the same approach. And there is another one, a uh, connection between OT systems and museums. OT system is a museum, you know, because you can find very old operating systems, very old uh, devices still working nowadays properly without any, any uh, failures. And in OT systems, the final conclusion is it's everything, it's, uh, it's all about availability. Okay. Uh, does anyone, anyone here in the audience working with OT systems? One, two, three. Okay, wonderful. Okay. So, uptime is measured in years. Do you, do you agree? Yes. I've seen devices with uptime more than eight years without restarting, without shutting down, shutting in the meantime. So this is pretty, pretty good. Okay. So let me, let me go through Windows bri briefly, to, through the Windows history, just to remind you uh, about major updates or major uh, functionalities introduced by the Microsoft through the years, in the last 25 years. If you're talking about uh, Windows XP, almost uh, 20, 24 years ago, 
Uh, we are talking about introducing the firewall for the first time as a host-based firewall on Windows operating system only in one direction. You can configure XP, Windows XP, only in one direction, right? Uh, and we are talking about .NET framework, introducing the .NET framework version one. It's pretty, pretty old and shitty version, but it works, right? Okay. And a few, uh, few years later, uh, Windows introduced uh, Windows Vista and Windows Server 2008 with firewall. Look at that. With firewall denying or allowing connections, the traffic in both directions. So you can configure firewall finally in outgoing and ingoing direction on host base. On host basis, right? They introduced integrity levels, uh, UAC, PowerShell 1.0. This is the first operating system, Windows operating system with a PowerShell, etc., etc. So, Windows 7, the 2009. In Windows 7, uh, you can find the newer version of PowerShell, PowerShell 2. And Windows 8 was the pretty, uh, pretty different at the time, was the completely different operating system from the user perspective, definitely, compared to Windows 7, uh, with a lot of security uh, built in features, such as Windows Defender, etc. And I won't go through the, all the versions because it doesn't, doesn't matter so much. What I want to tell you and I want to show you one case. This is, it was the first case in OT, at least from my perspective. I will introduce the case. It's a, it's a realistic case. Okay. I, uh, I uh, make name AV driver, antivirus driver, because attacker took uh, the, the driver of Avast antivirus as a as a attacking tool to stop antivirus in whole system it was uh, back then i don't know 5 years ago it was vulnerability in avast operating uh, in avast antivirus systems so it was very very easy to stop the antivirus on the computer okay so let me introduce you to case narrative in the beginning put yourself in uh, in early beginning of uh, of this incident so my colleague, one, one morning, my colleague, incident leader, called me and he said, we have an incident, very serious one, without serious impact on environment. But we know that in this moment, the attacker is inside of the system, doing some stuff, connecting on computers. The problem is that we have few hundreds of Windows servers, with different versions of it. You know, from Windows Server 2003, Windows Server 2008, even the patch level was different, etc. And all of them were old and unpatched, which is horrible. Without, most of them without uh, antivirus protection, without any kind of protection on it. You know, just, uh, plain uh, default configuration with, install, uh, with uh, installed software such as SCADA or, or HMI to control the system inside of the very big industrial control system in Croatia. And uh, we spoke with the technologists and administrators and they said uh, immediately, shutting down is not an option. You can't install anything on it and restart the any of those servers because there's no impact in this moment and we, don't, we, we, we want to avoid any side effects of your uh, incident response in, in, in our environment, which is quite normal for OT. You can expect this on every single incident response uh, engagement. Installing anything is not an option. Either if you want to install super modern EDR on very old operating system, 
such as CrowdStrike, it won't work in every single situation and it's, it's uh, unimaginable because you are interrupting, you can interrupt the normal ongoing processes inside of the operating systems which are responsible for microprocesses inside of the OT network, okay? Remember the first rule, watch, don't touch. And you are incident responder. There are some expectations, you know, from the customer's side and you don't, you don't have much options. And especially overloading anything in terms of CPU, RAM, inside of the Windows operating system is not, a, not an option. You know, if you, if you overload because you install something if you, or if you uh, took the tool for forensics and you overload in the operating system, it will cause some damage. Okay, so after the first two hours of incident, we uh, we, we, we discuss the findings, initial findings inside of the uh, system and we found uh, one infected computer with very specific indicators on it. After a few minutes, we found another two computers, uh, two computers um, in, in uh, the network and after performing some forensics, reversing, discussing internally, we, uh, we have, uh, finally we have a list of the trade craft, of the attacker's trade craft. You know, uh, all the indicators, very specific indicators, IP, one IP address, uh, uh, three or four uh, file names on exact locations, installed on the exact locations on the every single Windows operating system. And it was enough it was enough for us to inspect all computers in the system, but how can you inspect and find indicators without any tools, right? It's pretty hard, especially on older versions of, of Windows. But we have central provisioning system, such as Microsoft SCCM, fortunately. It was great, great news for us because from one point, we can distribute anything to every single server inside of the um, inside of this uh, big uh, industrial control system on every single geolocation remotely without going to location you know and uh, checking manually infections at artifacts etc so i came to i came up to a great idea let's build a bot script and use natively built-in Windows tools to detect malware and to distribute this information to a data collector inside of our environment. So I will show you step-by-step step the main functionalities of the script and uh, the way you can use uh, regular Windows commands in the, uh, that are built in, in, uh, in the last tw 25 years in the Windows. So uh, everything is the same for every single Windows uh, operating systems, system from XP till Windows 11. Okay, it's very, very, very simple, but uh, if you use them uh, in more creative way, you can help yourself during the incident. Okay, so, uh, if you want to search for specific files on specific locations inside of the windows, you can use exist, okay? And you can put, I don't know, 10 files, 10 paths. All you have to do to put a space in between them and this is like an operator or either this one or this one file, okay? in case you, the script finds your, your file on the operating system, you can use variable to increase the number of found indicators, okay? This is, a, this is the variable that I used uh, in, in the script. And the second variable will be concatenating variable with the letters inside of it is a, a concatenating string variable 
indicating that I found the file on the, this system. Okay, we found the Avast DLL on this path, on the system root path. Okay, in case of finding that, the, the script will add F letter, capital F letter at the end of the string. Okay, if you want to search for network connections, you can use netstat. This works on Windows XP exactly the same way as in Windows 11, on Windows Server 2003, on Windows Server 2008, etc. That's why, that's why I took very simple commands. Okay, the story here, this, uh, uh, this part of the code is the same as the previous one from the previous slide. Okay, you can find, if you, in the case you find uh, IP address, we will add, we will concatenate another one letter, signaling that there is a network indicator of this computer, okay? You can find also specific ports. Instead of the IP addresses, you can put 100 IP addresses in, in inside, of the, inside of the find string command. It's very easy. Of course, you have to catch the established connection, right, on the PC. At the moment of, of, uh, of valid and fully functional TCP connection on the, on the, uh, on the uh, infected computer. Okay, IP config. With IP config, you can look at the DNS cache, just displaying, displaying the DNS. In, with this syntax, and you can search for very specific internet addresses as an indicator, and it's the same approach. You can add one letter as an indicator that you found, that the script found uh, in uh, this specific indicator on the computer, okay? Task list, you can list all the uh, processes currently available, currently running on the operating system is the same on all Windows versions. It's version independent. And you can search for very specific uh, process names. With the schedule tasks, you can look at the configured schedule tasks on the Windows operating system. It's very simple command, nothing super special without any philosophy, right? Okay. If you use query for uh, uh, query and FO table, uh, sorry, uh, flags, you can list in very, very readable and very uh, clear uh, shape all the all the uh, configured uh, uh, schedule tasks. And we are searching for very specific super super specific name of the schedule task on this computer. Okay. WMIC. It works on XP perfectly, but it works with very narrow set of commands. And this is one of those commands that you can use. It's product get name version, and you can list all the installed applications on the, on, the, on the computer. Unfortunately, for example, with WMIC, if you run this command with username something, you can list all the configured usernames on the Windows 11, but it doesn't work on Windows XP. This one works on Windows XP. And uh, as I said already, we can add in case we, we found uh, indicator, specific indicator, we can, we can add this uh, append uh, capital A as an indicator, as a descriptor or something like that in this variable. I will show you at the end of the, of the, of the program or the script uh, detection variable and uh, its usage. Okay, so with net start, you can find all configured services. It's the same for every single Windows operating system. This is very important. So you don't have to, you don't have to uh, deal with uh, various kind of versions, etc. You can query Windows registry. Also, with RecQuery, it's a built-in tool. Nothing super special about it. Okay. QWinsta, QWinsta. It's a very simple command in Windows. 
if you type in this command, you will see currently connected users via RDP. It's very valuable information during the incident if you want to catch the attacker and uh, his, his activities inside of the network. And another one, net user, you can list all the users currently configured local users on Windows operating systems. As I said already, you can use WMIC, unfortunately, but it doesn't work on very old operating systems. It works, it works on, uh, on brand new Windows versions, such as Windows 10, Windows 8, uh, Windows 11, etc. but it doesn't work on server 2003 because it's, it's very, very uh, simple. Uh, uh, the WMIC, it's uh, installed and configured in very simple form in, in those uh, older versions. Okay, wonderful. The script found a suspicion in, suspicious indicator. So we took the script with uh, com specific configuration in it. We distributed the script through all the system on few hundreds of servers, but the question is how can you, uh, uh, how can you collect the feedback from the servers? Let's call the feedback, you know? Okay, the first option is to, in case of finding the indicator, you can ping, the infected machine will ping your computer, incident responder computer, inside of the network. Wonderful. But how to differentiate all the pings from network scanners, etc. You can play with time to live indicator and you can search for time to live lower than 30, for example. Okay, that's how you can differentiate infected pings from healthy pings inside of the network. Another one option is to send DNS query with the host name in it as a subdomain with the host name of infected computer. You can ping computer without installing any tools. You can send DNS query without installing any tools. And the third option, you can send a very simple TXT report via FTP. Why? Because you don't have to install anything on Windows XP, Windows 11, Windows Server 2000 to use FTP client, it's built it in. If you want to use, for example, Telnet, you have to install it. If you want to use SSH, there's no SSH client on Windows XP, there's no such thing, okay? You are, not, you are unable to utilize such applications. Okay, so you have to send some kind of the beacon to incident responders computer from infected machines, right? And this is, in, this is a conditional part of the script, one, just one part. If, we f if the variable counter is greater than zero, then send, then ping this IP address, this is IP address of incident responder, five times just to differentiate pings from all others machines, all other machines from the network and ping with time to leave with value 30 or lower. It depends on the network, of course, if you know how time to leave works inside of the network, uh, you know why it's, it's important to track lower uh, time to leave values. So this is a very specific <coughs> kind of ping with using natively built in tools inside of every single windows without powershell without you know super super scripting engines just with batch scripting okay so if you want to send dns record from the affected machine you can use ns lookup is built in application inside of every single windows and you can send automatically from infected machine uh, internet uh, sorry internet addresses are such as these but let me explain a little bit further so here you can put inside of the 
the subdomain, you can put in as an info computer name of the uh, infected computer in the sub inside of the subdomain, and you can put all the capital letters inside of the subdomain as uh, indicators, as uh, let's say a description of indicators that are found on the infected computer, and you can use your domain, company's domain. I uh, I advise you to use, you know, privately registered domain, not your company's domain, because if you are running this script inside of the network where attacker is currently connected and he, uh, he see uh, he see your uh, your domain, that's that's pretty pretty bad, you know. So uh, the the most important thing here, you can register domain. And you can put a subdomain such as call collector or something else, I don't care, as authoritative server. So put your IP address, public IP address of your company's DNS server publicly anywhere in the world, but put your subdomain of, your, of this domain as authoritative DNS server. This means that if someone anywhere in the, in the world sends uh, any kind of DNS query with this subdomain and your company's domain, always in every single situation, this DNS query will reach your DNS server anywhere in the world, okay? It's a very simple trick. And uh, this number here is random number. Its purpose is to avoid DNS caching inside of the companies. What is DNS caching? If you have a network of end hosts and servers, and in between there is a proxy, and here you have DNS local enterprise DNS server, DNS caching will be cache the, the, the most common DNS queries inside of the proxy, you know, to avoid a uh, bursting of DNS queries towards the, your corporate DNS. And if you want to avoid DNS caching, if you want to make sure that every single DNS query will leave your company where you are testing the environment, you can put a random number and that's how you can avoid DNS caching. I mean, DNS caching is good, good thing for everyday use, but for this scenario, it's pretty, pretty, pretty bad because if you send multiple DNS queries in a very short uh, period of time from the same server, proxy will stop your queries because it, it has already uh, memorized the, the, the translation, proper translation of your query. That's why if you put the random number, every single DNS query will be different and you can avoid, you can bypass caching inside of the proxy systems. And that's good, Th this is the functionality that we need, that we need in, in such uh, approach. Okay, so uh, I defined a few IOCs just uh, to show you how script do does work in OT environment. So the, uh, those indicators that you see currently on the, on the, disp on the slides, are the very specific uh, indicators for Agent Tesla. I took Agent Tesla as a sample, sample scenario for this uh, presentation. So we are searching for very specific file name. We are searching for network connection towards 587 uh, port, which is specific for email translations, email, uh, um, email communication. We are searching for DNS records such as these. SMTP agent blah 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 something. This is specific for this uh, kind of malware. We are searching for very specific name of the process and um, persistent mechanism inside of the registry. Okay, so let me show you the approach. Give me a few moments.
Is it visible? Okay, so this is the computer. This is clean computer without any infections on it, okay? Number of indicators found is zero in this moment. I double clicked on the agent Tesla malware. We are waiting for a few moments to make sure that everything is told properly from the perspective of malware, such as files, uh, registry modifications, etc. Okay, and then I will rerun the same script, and you can see number of indicators found file. Network indicator, registry indicator, process indicator, sending DNS beacon from PC, blah, 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 to my domain. I'm, I'm listening for DNS beacons. Sending ICM beacon to local IP address of incident responders computer with time to leave value 30 or lower. It depends on the network topology. And uh, let me reverse, okay and sending results via FTP. You can use, of course, only DNS. You don't have to use all three um, possibilities. You, you, uh, you can use all, only DNS or, or only ICMP for, for sending uh, beacons, you know, confirming I'm infected. This is the DNS record that I'm sending you to let you know that I'm infected. This is the, the purpose of, of it, okay? And uh, if we look at the process name, it's very simple approach. You know, you, we can use process hacker or task manager. We see that the malware is here, active. If we look at the configuration, the, the most common configuration for persistence inside of the registry is automatic run to survive reboot of the Windows operating system. It's very specific for this malware. The script already found all those uh, indicators inside of the computer. This is the exact location. And nothing super special about it, okay? But from the side, from the incident uh, responders side, let me show you. We are waiting for beacons from infected computers, okay? On the top screen, you can see fake DNS waiting for DNS queries. And on the lower screen, you can see TCP dump, filtering only ICMP, uh, ICMP echo requests with time to leave 30 or, or lower. And I will, in the meantime, I, I uh, starting the script. We have to wait for a few more seconds. Okay, this is the domain from the malware. Okay, this is how it looks like from the incident responder side. You see, five, five pings from the infected computer and very specific DNS requests that came from one company to my public DNS authoritative server and this is the uh, folder from my FTP server containing the very short report from the FTP stating all the indicators that are found on the remote computer. Everything is automatic, written in batch with, without, any, without any PowerShell, without using uh, any PowerShell. So let me show you, let me show you the hex value that I mentioned. Let me translate it. Okay. Okay, you saw the hex value inside of the subdomain. If you translate it to the ASCII format, you will see the host name of the affected computer and you will see the capital letters concatenated inside of the one string and uh, configured to send DNS query as a subdomain. So that's how you know the host name of infected computers. That's how you know 
um, indicators that the script found already on the computers. And from my perspective, it took me, I don't know, four hours to build the first version of uh, this script to, to test inside of our laboratory to make sure that everything works exactly the same on every single Windows from the last 25 years. And we distributed this script by using Microsoft SCC uh, M provisioning system. And after just 15 or 20 seconds, we received 18 computers without, with zero, zero false positives, sending DNS, uh, DNS queries to our DNS server, sending pings to incident responders IP as address inside of the infected network. And that's, that's pretty, you know, pretty, uh, I love to say, pretty, uh, you know, what is KISS, keep it simple and stupid. Without using any super advanced tools, you can solve very, I, I will not say very complex problems, but if you have such arsenal of tools at your disposition, you can use them wisely to detect malwares, to detect any kind of uh, suspicious activities inside of your network without installing anything, without, uh, without uh, CPU or RAM uh, molesting, <laughs> which is especially, uh, 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 let's say, uh, dangerous in, in OT environments. And if you want to download this batch script, you can download uh, it on, uh, you can find it on uh, my git, you can play with it. This is not super special script, super, you know, uh, super advanced, finding zero days, etc. It's very simple, very, very well, a very structured written script that you can use for your environments without any danger, dangers that you will, uh, you will, uh, crash something, you will impact on your systems. And uh, I think that's it. I mean, thank you. Thank you for your time. I think I'm uh, right on time. Yeah, I finished right on time. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and that, that's it for me. Any questions? Thank you, uh, Boyan. Um, do we have any? We do. Who's over here? Uh, what tools did you use before writing this uh, batch script? S sorry? Uh, what tools did you use before uh, you wrote this uh, batch uh, file um, for incident responses? Uh, Notepad++. Plus plus. Ah, and I my see. knowledge. <laughs> okay. I gained my knowledge about these tools. I mean, this is nothing super special. You know, if you ask any older system administrators, they are familiar with those tools. Unfortunately, newer generations in IT doesn't know all those functionalities because they use PowerShell. I, I mean, it's quite normal, you know, but you don't have to use any kind of super specific tools to program bash script. Notepad++ is enough. Yeah, but I mean, uh, what, like uh, before you had the script, uh, what tools did you use to uh, respond to incidences? What, what tools? Yeah, like did you just uh, issue the same commands uh, without making this, this uh, script? Uh, you mean in, inside of the OT incidents? Yeah. Or, oh, uh, yeah, I mean for every single incident you have different situation because every single OT system is a little bit different than others. You know, I, I've seen for example uh, environments where you can find on every single workstation or server EDR solution. That's perfect. I mean, that's super, su super from, from, the, the, from the perspective of incident responder or SOC analysts. And you don't have to develop such scripts. It's stupid to, to, to waste time developing such things, you know. Uh, I also have experience, for example, in uh, environments with Allen Bradley systems, Hirschman systems. 
and it's perfect from, from the perspective of monitoring network because you can replicate the network connections on your uh, computer. You can use, for example, uh, for example, CyberLens. This is free tool, and it's a wonderful tool to visualizing all connections inside of the in this industrial control system. You can use it on the fly. You know, just connecting your your PC on the switch. You don't have to have a, a span port as a port mirror to mirror all the traffic inside of the network because there's a, there is a one very specific. Uh, the, the, uh, most of the protocols inside of the OT networks, such as Ethernet IP, it, it's not related to Ethernet. It's Ethernet Industrial Protocol, or BACnet, or I don't know. Uh, uh, there is a ton of it's step seven, etc. They use natively multicasting to communicate between just two devices. It's stupid approach, but as I said at the early beginning of this presentation, unsecured by design. Those protocols are written by guys originally or that came from OT networks, not from IT. And sometimes if you connect your PC in the switch, in the Ethernet switch inside of the industrial control system and, and you open Wireshark, you will see a lot of broadcasts and a lot of multicasts and you can map just in the first five minutes, you can map a lot of uh, IP, uh, alive IP addresses inside of the network, especially if you're talking about Windows. Windows has MBNS, multicast pro protocol, and LLMNR, translation protocol, which is a newer version of uh, 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 MBNS protocol, supporting IP version 6, etc. So if you just listen inside of the network, uh, with CyberLens or with Wireshark or with TCP dump, you can gather all IP addresses just by listening. Without any scanning, without any additional configuration, that's OT, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if there are, thank you for the question, if there are any more, any further questions, please reach out directly uh, to Boyan either during lunch or anytime during the rest of the day. Once again, Boyan, thank you very much. Thank you. Kusanam.